perfect health. Have you any conception of what the phrase means? Can you form any image of what would be your feeling if every organ in your body were functioning perfectly? Perhaps you can go back to some day in your youth when you got up early in the morning and went for a walk and the spirit of the sunrise got into your blood and you walked faster and took deep breaths and laughed aloud for the sheer happiness of being alive in such a world of beauty. And now you are grown older, and what would you give for the secret of that glorious feeling? What would you say if you were told that you could bring it back and keep it, not only for mornings, but for afternoons and evenings? And not as something accidental and mysterious, but as something which you yourself have created, and of which you are completely master. This is not an introduction to a new device in patent medicine advertising. I have nothing to sell and no process patented. It is simply that for ten years I have been studying the ill health of myself and of the men and women around me, and I have found the cause and the remedy. I have not only found good health, but perfect health. I have found a new state of being, a new potentiality of life, a sense of lightness and cleanness and joyfulness such as I did not know could exist in the human body. I like to meet you on the street, said a friend the other day. You walk as if it were such fun. I look about me in the world, and nearly everybody I know is sick. I could name, one after another, a hundred men and women who are doing vital work for progress and carrying a cruel handicap of physical suffering. For instance, I am working for social justice, and I have comrades whose help is needed every hour, and they are ill. In one single week's newspapers last spring, I read that one was dying of kidney trouble, that another was in hospital from nervous breakdown, and that a third was ill with ptomaine poisoning. And in my correspondence, I am told that another of my dearest friends has only a year to live, that another heroic man is a nervous wreck craving for death, and that a third is tortured by bilious headaches. And there is not one of these people whom I could not cure if I had him alone for a couple of weeks. No one of them who would not, in the end, be walking down the street as if it were such fun. I propose herein to tell the story of my discovery of health, and I shall not waste much time in apologizing for the intimate nature of the narrative. It is no pleasure for me to tell over the tale of my headaches or to discuss my unruly stomach. I cannot take any case but my own, because there is no case about which I can speak with such authority. To be sure, I might write about it in the abstract and in veiled terms, but in that case the story would lose most of its convincingness and so of its usefulness. I might tell it without signing my name to it, but there are a great many people who have read my books and will believe what I tell them who would not take the trouble to read an article without a name.